Hey everyone, I just wanted to let you know before this week's episode that The Mac Rumor Show will actually be migrating to an entirely different YouTube channel in the near future. And so I don't want to leave anyone behind. And so if you could go over to youtube.com slash at The Mac Rumor Show, the link will be in the description down below as well. And subscribe to the channel so again, we don't leave anyone behind and you don't miss out on every episode and clips and shorts and anything that's related to the podcast will eventually all be posted on that channel. For right now, we'll post here and we'll post over there. But eventually, like I said, it's all going to be moving to that other YouTube channel. And it would mean a lot if you could subscribe. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. And we hope to see you over on that YouTube channel. And enjoy this week's episode. Welcome back to another episode of The Mac Rumor Show. Hartley, how are you doing? Good morning. Good. Slash good afternoon. Um, yeah. So today, we are going to talk about another singular topic, um, and it's interesting because I want to get your 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 uh, your thoughts about the whole beeper beeper mini iMessage debacle that's been going on with the last you know over the last week or so. Um, you know, definitely over on Twitter slash X, people are they have opinions, of course. Who you know, people having opinions on on the internet. Wow, what a shock there. Um, but you know, I, I use Android phones I have used, and then there, there are a few apps. And by the way, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I'll just give you a quick, like high level, uh, synopsis of what beeper is. And there are a few other apps that do this, but beeper is probably one of the better services that I've used, um, that allows for you to get iMessage on Android basically and what it did. So in the past there's beeper cloud, which was the original beeper app. And what you had to do was sign in with your Apple ID via this beeper app on a Mac. Now there have been other ways of getting this, like where you'd have to have a server set up on your Mac and your Mac has to be running constantly. And this isn't quite the same in the sense that yes, you have to have the app on a Mac, but you don't have to have it running constantly. And it's not really like, a server per se, it just needs to connect to a Mac uh, that is capable of getting your iMessages. Um, and then it kind of takes care of it from there. Uh, and so I've used it in the past. There, you know, Beeper says security wise that everything is stored locally on your device. Um, you're not giving them your, I, your Apple ID information, but I mean, how are you supposed to know that for real if that's really happening? Uh, you got to take them at their word. So that's what I did. And I've used it. And it, it did work really, really well. Um, and then Beeper Mini came out, which is where all of this started. And this was, and I don't know the exact way, but apparently they got somebody to reverse engineer Apple's uh, system here for iMessage in a way that it worked where you would just basically register your iMessage. Your, you would register your phone number uh as a you know iMessage solution basically like you would when you get your iPhone it registers your phone number your email address whatever it registers this with Apple and then it uses all of Apple's abilities to give you iMessage which is a lot more secure in a way of like rather than giving them your Apple ID you're just kind of setting it up via your phone number and then everything's handled through Apple just like you would through your iPhone and that did work really really well for about 72 hours and then apple figured this out and basically shut it down um and they said that they would continue to do so because it lacks security and privacy and i don't know that i necessarily believe that there's a security issue with that because it's basically behaving the same way as if you were registering your phone number on your iphone for imessage um, so I don't know how there's a security. Maybe the security issue lies within the fact that they got somebody to easily reverse engineer this. Um, but yeah, I mean, so Apple shut it down. And so there's been this whole debate about whether it's okay for people to want to do this. Like Beeper, like, do they have the right to do this? Or is it wrong? Because they're basically like piggybacking off of Apple services and charging money for it, by the way. It was a $1.99 subscription uh, to use this service. And, you know, I could see things both ways, but I want to hear Hartley's thoughts. So, Hartley, after going through all of that, how do you feel about this whole thing? Uh, well, it's interesting because there are arguments on both sides that are good arguments, ultimately, um, because right. uh, I ultimately don't think that what Beaver is doing is right. But I will mm -hmm. say that the way that they argue that it is is quite interesting. And one of those is uh, they argue that 
it's um, within uh, their legal right to reverse engineer Apple's technology. Um, that is protected from copyright law. So they argue that in looking at Apple systems and in working out a way to integrate other services ultimately with Apple services that is covered by the legal protections right. for reverse engineering. Um, that ultimately is a question for the lawyers to decide whether it really does constitute reverse engineering. Right. Um, but I would just like to go back to one thing you just said, which was about the security side of this. Um, Apple said that it was, uh, or it ostensibly posed a risk uh, to users. Um, and I, you said you're not, you're not too sure whether you believe that. I think it does have to be stressed that they are creating fake credentials. They are, they are using um, uh, fake, um, fake information um, to register on Apple servers. So it's in, in what way, in what way, in what way is it fake? Um, well, they are, they are, they are using um, fake credentials to register Android users phone numbers on Apple okay. server. So what beeper is doing? Cause like the user is giving them their phone number yeah. or their Apple ID, depending on which one you're using. And those are all legit, obviously. Um, but I think what Apple was meaning by, um, that that opens the the door to uh, security risks is that means that if Apple allowed that to go ahead, they are allowing fake credentials to be registered um, on iMessage servers. So if they're going to allow that, what else are they going to allow? What what other fakery or deception do you allow to occur? Um, because ultimately, it's not like they've they've just worked out how to just slide into the into into iMessage servers with no with no deception with no fakery and with no uh no sort of uh I don't want to call it malicious because it's ultimately um ultimately I think possibly well intended but it is also a business so they are also trying right. to make money out of using a deceptive practice so it, it's it is messy um yeah I think the arguments around it are interesting but I guess you're you're in favor of it as someone that's used it You've enjoyed using it. You think it's a good thing? Oh, I mean, I think it's a great thing in the sense of like just looking at what it does and what you're getting. It is, I've tried numerous options. I think one was like Air Message, maybe, um, oh, yeah. or Blue Bubbles or some Blue Bubbles or something like that, where you've had it. I had to set up like a farm on my Mac. I just used like an old Mac Mini, let it run constantly never went to sleep like that's just not good and ultimately i didn't have a good feeling about all of that um and like i would never use that as a main like oh i'm switching to android and i'm taking android with me and then what if my computer goes out power goes out then i'm stuck and i can't send i message i messages to anyone um i didn't like that then sunbird came around which by the way sunbird is what um runs in a similar sense i don't remember offhand exactly how that works uh but i'm pretty sure it's another way that doesn't require um a mac it just you sign in i believe via apple id again i yeah. could be totally wrong it's been a bit since yeah, i've no, used I think it that's but correct yeah and then that and that did work really well too and then that is what nothing uh the you know the phone company nothing um that is what they used to launch nothing chat which um, you know, then there was that whole thing, like a couple days later, you know, Apple announced RCS. So I, I do want to say just getting into everything at the end of the day, if we just wait until RCS launches, we're almost there. I mean, you basically, for those of you who are like, who have an Android phone, who are complaining that Apple is shutting this down and just want to be able to send iMessage via their Android device. I mean, RCS is coming. So it's not like it's, you're going to be screwed forever. Like it's, it's, it's gonna be okay um but yeah i mean I, I i'm one of those people who would love for iMessage to work on android because uh you know i get bored of the iphone sometimes and i want to make the switch but i'm 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 invested in an in iMessage and that whole part of the ecosystem so if there's a way to get it to work cool i'm on board however i am not cool with like illegal ways to make that work uh or ways in which that would you know have security risks um so i don't want to even pretend that i know all the ins and outs um if apple says there's a security risk fine i have skepticism about that the fake credential thing if that's the way they're doing it 
I mean, it is well intended, but if that does launch like a, a a way, like a basically a guide for people who don't have the best intentions to do that, then yes, shut that down immediately. I also think that this company should not be able to make money off of this uh, in the sense that, you know, unless they're paying Apple in some way and Apple like is cool with this, um, then yeah, charge away. You got a business to run. But if they're just stealing the service, <laughs> but there's just, there's just so much that goes into this. Like people have brought up reverse engineering with Apple and how they did that with Microsoft uh, for like Microsoft Office and Docs and stuff. Uh, so like, but like that's a little bit different. But is it though? I mean, Apple didn't technically charge us, but in a way, you know, you're paying for the machine and then you, if you want to send and use Doc, I mean, there's just, there's not like reverse engineering isn't new, but the way that beeper is doing it I, I i do get that you know maybe they shouldn't be charging maybe it's like an ad based thing like if they wanted to make money off of ads sure but you're not it's ultimately a free service to be you know used then that's that would might be a little bit morally okay but i don't know i still tried it i still paid the 199 um I still have it actually running on one of my phones right now this episode of the mac rumor show is brought to you by magic lasso adblock Do you want to experience twice as fast load times in Safari on your iPhone, iPad, and Mac? Then download Magic Lasso Adblock, the ad blocker designed for you. It's easy to set up, blocks all YouTube ads, and doubles the speed at which Safari loads. Magic Lasso is an efficient, high-performance, and native ad blocker. With over 5,000 five-star reviews, it's simply the best Safari ad blocker for your iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Magic Lasso blocks all intrusive ads, trackers, and annoyances, letting you experience a faster, cleaner, and more secure web browsing experience. And unlike some other ad blockers, Magic Lasso respects your privacy and doesn't accept payment from advertisers. Online privacy isn't just something you should be hoping for. Stop being followed by ads around the web by blocking all ad trackers and ensuring that your browsing history is not harvested by ad networks. The app also blocks over 10 types of YouTube ads, including all video, banner, search, and suggested product ads. So join over 280,000 users and download Magic Lasso Adblock from the App Store or as a special offer for the Mac Rumor Show podcast listeners, go to www.magiclasso.co slash macrumors to receive one month's free access to all the app's features. That's www.magic. L-A-S-S-O dot C-O slash Mac rumors to receive one month's free access to all features. Thanks again to Magic Lasso Adblock for their support of this show. I think that the uh, the example you raised about um, reverse engineering word files is an interesting one because that's the one I feel like people have been talking about the most. But to me, it just, it just differs fundamentally <laughs> because... Well, it's it, not- I mean, it's different. Yeah, it's a... The, the the files um reverse engineering one file to move to another machine on a uh to to to, for, to reverse engineer it to convert it into another file for another machine is not the same thing as a service that is operated at all times it would be like if i said to you uh well you can access spotify but you don't have to pay spotify you can pay another company and we'll just let you sign in through us it's clearly no, a, but- a a service it's not a it's not a file but think about this, though. The appeal for Microsoft computers back in that day, you know, when Microsoft Word was like the main program that everybody used for business and they were sending files back and forth. Most people, if they couldn't open up those files on a Mac, they just wouldn't use a Mac. So, like, yes, you're not charging for that file to work. You know, you're not, you're not charging for this to happen, but you are essentially taking money away from microsoft in the sense that like well if it works now and that was my main like caveat that i couldn't buy a mac and now i can use this free program uh to write my documents and send them between people i why would i buy a microsoft machine and then have to eventually license out and pay monthly or whatever the yearly subscription was at the time uh to run office and word when you could just use apple's free suite of apps and just have it work with both platforms the difference there is that you're not uh, breaking into a Microsoft machine and then actually using that Microsoft machine. You're just... I don't know how they um, did it. <laughs> but, they're, but they're just... They're, they're, they're not... Uh, you're using a service. 
Um, so it's not like from one device to another. Although you can say that because it's a messaging service, you ultimately that is being hosted somewhere. Um, and if yeah, Apple I is mean, hosting that service, then it's it's not like you're just converting something at one end to appear at the other. Yeah. I mean, I, I think there are all sorts of gray legal areas behind this that, I mean, my guess was, um, well, my guess is that a couple of things here. Either there really is a, uh, um, like, legal ground that Beeper can stand on, and Apple hasn't quite yet figured out the way to press charges or, you know, file a lawsuit against them um, in the in the sense of, like, getting them to stop. But that could either just be on the way. I'm sure there's some sort of workaround they could figure out. Or they don't really want to sue a small company that's, like, you know, a handful of developers that some guy started. You know, maybe they just don't want that PR on them. So it's easier for them to probably just figure out a way to squash that so it doesn't work. Um, but ultimately, I can't imagine this is going to last very long. No. But, you know, Beeper is committed to finding ways, and they've got it up and running, but it's back to the way it was now. It's no longer via your phone number. It's, it's back to being, you got to give them your Apple ID. And who knows how long it'll take for them to figure out a way to squash that one. Maybe they can't. And ultimately, if you give out your Apple ID to a company that you already know is uh, using techniques like fake credentials, um, even if that company says that everything is fully encrypted, even if that company says that they store all of that securely, how do you know if it's ultimately just a small startup? Um, how do you know well, into whose hands those that information um, goes I, I definitely am not going to give my apple id out um to any organization other than apple so isn't uh eric who is the like founder of this isn't he um he was previously at pebble so i mean it's not like just some random person like he has a you know yeah it's not it's not he about, has a history to stand his on. personal credibility but it's about the company sure. who knows where that data goes who what if they are subject to a data breach um so it's it's not uh, as reliable as Apple's commitments to right, we're, privacy. We're going to we're going to pull up the official wording here because uh you know, I don't want to say things. So with Beeper Mini specifically, uh the website says, unlike every other attempt to build an Android app like this, including Beeper Cloud, Beeper Mini does not use a Mac relay server in the cloud. The Android app connects directly to Apple servers to send and receive end-to-end -end encrypted messages. Encryption keys and contact lists never leave your device. No Apple ID is required to use Beeper Mini. Beeper does not have access to your Apple account. So yeah, that's what they said for Beeper Mini. And then I'm trying to look for the regular Beeper um, one because that one does use a, a bit of a different, you know, like it said, it's the Mac relay. Um, and it does say specifically that they do not like have access to your Apple ID and information. So again, we've said this, both of us, like I, I, I have to take that, you know, at face value, I have to take them for their word that they really aren't accessing what we are putting in. And it really is just like another, like a bridge to just signing in with your iMessage because you have to, you know, give a verification code. It does work exactly the same way, but. Yeah, I mean, with your Apple ID, I'm sorry. So, would you would you try it? Uh, no, because I wouldn't want to give my credentials <laughs> out to a, a company that I ultimately don't know if I can trust. Um, okay, so I you're mean, saying if, I'm an if idiot? It was... <laughs> no, uh, I'm not saying that. I'm uh -huh. saying that uh -huh. uh, if it was audited, if it was fully audited, and there was total transparency, and people that are cleverer than me said, "Yes, this is safe." Um, then maybe. Um, but also, there, there is a moral issue here, um, which I, I don't really feel like it's anyone else's business to say, well, Apple should do this, or Apple should do that, Apple should let something happen, or Apple shouldn't, because really, it's up to yeah. Apple. Um, and I think the best example of this, um, well, for example, if there was a club, um, and it costs $999 to 
to get your membership uh, for that club. And right. that is exclusive. Mm -hmm. But someone can kind of prop open the the window in the bathroom and kind of give you a leg up and let you in and they'll charge you $2 a month for that. You're still getting into the club, but that person who is providing you with that service is not paying the rent. Um, they are not providing the service. So it's well within uh, the right of the owner of that club to say, what the hell are you doing? You have no right to do this and we're, we're shutting you down and probably suing you. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I agree. That's, I, that's why I'm yeah. like, I'm stuck in like this whole, what I do not like is this whole like, if you want iMessage so bad, then buy an Android. Like, or I mean, buy buy an iPhone. Like, yes, I understand what you mean, but like, people just want a better way to communicate with those other phones that don't leave us with like a terrible experience. That that's all they want. They don't, you know, because a lot of people do use iPhones, so it's a frustrating experience when you don't want to use an iPhone, but you can't have a good conversation that's encrypted, that is safe, that has the ability to show you videos and photos that aren't in potato quality. Um, you know, it's just like, these are basic level features that everybody should be able to have. And also the whole like, well, this doesn't matter because everybody uses WhatsApp and stuff. It's like, that's, that's sure for the rest of the world, but in, in, in America, North America area. And even for you, you said you don't use, um, WhatsApp, you guys still use iMessage out there. Like, that, that's a large subset of the world still that has a lot of devices that, uh, you know, this is a real issue for. Now, the biggest thing that I can say is wait about six months and RCS should inevitably fix most of these issues. So now, if Apple does the Apple thing and, you know, makes it, slightly less of an enjoyable experience because they still ultimately want to push you onto their platform. Well, that's a whole other discussion at that time, but yeah. I think just, RCS I, is the main thing that undermines yeah. the argument for these sorts of apps. Um, before mm -hmm. Apple had agreed to provide that service um, or integrate it, I should say, I think it was a little bit of a different discussion. Um, although absolutely it was still within Apple's right uh, to stop people from abusing its the service that it actually um, created and continues to operate and pay the operating costs of. Um, but RCS really does provide the solution. So anyone that is arguing that um, this this should be allowed or that this offers some something different, I this is the one thing that Beeper itself has not been able to answer is why not just RCS? It's just for blue bubbles. That's it. You just want blue bubbles. Okay, well then buy an iPhone because ultimately it's that cosmetic. Once we have RCS, it will just be you just get blue bubbles. That's the only difference. Well, I mean, so in Beeper's defense, this existed before Apple announced the whole RCS integration. So in their minds, they're thinking that's never going to happen. And I want not blue bubbles necessarily, but I just want to be able to have the same experience without having to buy an iPhone. And so that was, and that's what I'm guessing is the whole reason why a lot of these companies and services and apps exist is because of that. But once Apple announced the whole RCS thing, uh, yeah, you're right. There's no reason for anyone to download any of this. Like, it doesn't matter. At that point, you're right. It's just for the blue bubble part. And who cares about the color of the bubbles? I don't care. If someone wants to call me, quote unquote, poor, because I'm not using an iPhone and I have a green bubble or make fun of me for that. That says more about you than it says about me. I just don't want to ruin the group chat in the sense that like everybody has a miserable experience. I want to be able to send a message to an iPhone person via Wi-Fi. I want to be able to send a video and want, have them see it in full glorious resolution that it was taken in. And just th those basic things, typing indicators, not really that important to me, but it's nice to have. Like an RCS is going to fix all of that. So. At this point, Beeper was like a little too late on the launch of Beeper Mini because it doesn't make any sense. Um, but, you know, when RCS does come out, Beeper could revamp its whole thing and just like figure out ways to make it a better chat app because 
Android has a whole mess of a situation when it comes to like one singular message app. Um, and so Beeper Cloud, the original part of Beeper, one of the main appeals for that is not only that it can do iMessage, but it can link other services like WhatsApp, Slack, Facebook, like all of your messages from these apps could go into Beeper. And that is appealing to me and should be appealing for other people in the sense that you could have one chat to kind of like, or one app to rule them all. If I could quote the Lord of the Rings here, like you, you can have one thing that encompasses everything. And so that's far more appealing once Apple adopts RCS and then you could have all of that than, you know, trying to steal its services right now uh, just for blue bubbles. So I think long term, that is probably the direction of travel here, um, whether large tech companies like it or not. Um, because there is pressure um, from the EU and from certainly there's a lot of antitrust scrutiny from other governments around the world to open up services. And one of the ones that it has been a, in particular a bone of contention in the EU is iMessage because it was designated, I believe, uh, if I've got my facts right, it was designated as a gatekeeper. Um, but then uh, Apple has appealed that and it now looks like it won't be. But the point is, is that it's in play now um, amongst regulators and the idea of forcing companies um, and forcing apps like uh, WhatsApp um, to open up and to integrate with other services. I feel like that is now um, in its infancy and I can only really see that moving in one direction ultimately um, because as much as Apple can fight, I think Apple is well within its right to fight things uh, like Beeper um, it's a different matter when it comes to governments. Um, and if that is what, uh, not just the EU, but you, you're seeing this in uh, South Korea and in Australia, and it's it's no good saying we'll just pull out of Europe, um, which is what a lot of comments seem to say when they say, oh, the, the EU's uh, you know, what, what can't command Apple and just pull out of Europe. But you're ultimately going to end up doing this in nearly every country if you did that. And also, right. let's not forget, Apple still is under scrutiny in the US itself over the exact same kind of thing. So Apple can't just take that approach of, we'll, we'll just pull out of these markets. Look at what's going to happen with sideloading. Next year, we'll have app sideloading in iOS 17. So long term, I can absolutely see uh, Apple being forced to allow you to plug other messaging services into the Messages app. This episode of The Mac Rumor Show is also sponsored by Notion. If you're like me, you probably already know just how incredible of an app Notion is. But for those who are unaware, let me tell you that you can really manage every aspect of your life, whether it be for work or personal, inside of Notion. So I was excited to learn that they've launched a new AI tool called Q&A. It's like a personal assistant that responds in seconds with exactly what you need right in your doc. I just used it the other day and asked to find me all of the scripts that I've written that contain specific keywords, as well as asking what work I should prioritize for the week. Notion AI can now give you instant answers to your questions using information from across your wiki, projects, docs, and meeting notes. Have an urgent question you'd normally turn to a coworker to answer? Just ask Q&A instead. It'll search throughout thousands of documents in seconds and answer your question in clear language, no matter how large or complex your workspace is. You can also ask Q&A questions from anywhere in Notion, so you can find exactly what you need without leaving the doc that you're in right now and stay focused on what's important. Plus, you can trust that your data is secure because Notion AI is designed to protect your information. No AI models are trained with your information. The data is encrypted, and answers will never use information from pages you don't have access to. When you use Notion AI, it's even easier to do your most meaningful work. Try Notion AI for free when you go to Notion.com slash MacRumors. That's all lowercase letters. Notion.com slash MacRumors to try the powerful, easy-to-use Notion AI today. And when you use our link, you're supporting our show. So that's Notion.com slash MacRumors. I can uh, – well, that – I. I'm all, I kind of feel I would be cool with that, honestly. I would love to have one less app to check if everything was just kind of aggregated. However, it could get kind of messy and annoying at times. But um, going back to this, though, I, do you think the whole, like, you know, Apple being forced by the EU and now all of a sudden it's looking like it's not? Do you think the, the RCS announcement helped? And that was kind of like the compromise of like, all right, get off our get off our ass about this. Like, this is... You know, this is the best we can do, which honestly is 
fine, I feel like. is it, It's a good compromise, right? I mean, you're getting everything that yeah. you want. You're just not getting the superficial blue bubbles. I think that it is going to be a key argument that is used to argue that iMessage is not a gatekeeper because if the if the experience is equivalent, Apple knows yep. that that is good enough to satisfy a legal argument because legally it's not good enough to say, well, uh, iMessage provides an experience that just looks better and people just like the look of it a little more. People like the feel of it a little bit more. That isn't good enough. So if, if Apple can say, nope, you get all the same functionality, you get your typing indicators, you get your tap backs, you get your high resolution video, um, that should with be enough. How, and with how Android works, there is no reason why I shouldn't see about forty thousand different iMessage type apps after RCS gets announced. There, you know, there's going to be like a carbon copy iMessage app out there. I mean, there are icons and skins and things that you can do to make your Android phone look like an iPhone. Like. There has to be an app that's going to get approved. And if you say it doesn't get approved by the Play Store, don't forget about sideloading, which you just talked about. And that was the other thing is like, well, why can't Apple just ask Google to remove uh, Beeper from the Play Store? Because people, if the people that want it, I mean, that'll have an impact. But the people that want it and know about it already will just sideload it. And so that that argument's irrelevant. But there is also that element of uh, people, of Android users wanting to be seen by iPhone users as sending blue bubbles. Yeah. That's how deep the psychology of this goes. Um, well, that, that, is that is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Yeah, it is, but and it's that, true. And but we all know that it's true. I'm okay with Apple gatekeeping that. In fact, I if that's what you want, then you should stupidly go spend money on an iPhone uh, and get, get your... Uh, yeah, if you want blue bubbles, buy an iPhone. I will tell you that. If you want the same experience that iPhone to iPhone people get, and you feel like you're entitled to that right, I, part- I I do agree with you on that. And that's why I'm okay with this. Like, I'm okay with this existing. I'm just not okay with how it's happening. And so I don't blame Apple for taking every precaution that they can to squash this as fast as they can. But I also don't blame the people at Beeper for making this and for people who have an Android wanting this experience, which is why... I am taking that old position just right on the fence, right down the middle. I'm right. I'm just split. I don't. I could see either way. I'm content with either outcome that happens with this. Personally, as someone who uses it and somebody who checks out like 19,000 different Android phones a year because there's just so many of them, uh, it is nice to have that service available. But, you know, I'm getting RCS in June. I'm guessing. I, I'm guessing it's in June. But at some point, it'll happen next year, according to Apple. So... I'm content with either way. And so I think we're in agreement then that Beeper's days are probably numbered. Um, well, I don't know that they can figure out a way to squash this Apple ID. Yeah, well, so Beeper Mini is done right now. They've they've gotten, like Beeper Mini exists, but it basically, they somehow figured out, and that's the other thing I, 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 want, I want some more information on. I wish we did extend an invitation to the Beeper CEO. Um, it might have been a little too late, have not heard back from him yet. Um, and maybe if he wants to come on, uh, in the future and like, give us like a quick 15 minute interview, cause I don't know if we're going to do another episode on this, but if he wants to come on and we can, uh, talk to him about this a little bit and get his side of the story, I'd be totally fine with revisiting this a little bit in the next episode or in the future. But, um, I, I do think that what they did now is a little interesting because beeper cloud worked in the sense that you had to have a Mac relay. And then give them your Apple ID to to get into this. Beeper Mini, again, was through registering a phone number via iMessage. Now that Beeper Mini can't do that anymore, it reverted back to the Apple ID, but you don't need a Mac for the relay. So how did they figure out that portion of it? Like, that's the part that I'm confused on. Maybe that exists out there and I just haven't looked at it. Um, But... I, I mean, they, they still improve they, they upon might be its core app. Emulating Max at their end or using uh, a server yeah. farm to to, uh, well, to do that. I don't know how long I don't know how long and sustainable that is, but uh, yeah, I mean, is it numbered in the sense of like the way it stood? Yeah, I mean, it's already done. Is Beeper Cloud numbered or like the the, the Apple ID version of this? I don't know. Uh, was this ever on Apple's radar beforehand? It had to have been with Sunbird and everything. 
and like nothing chat. And I, I'm guessing somebody at Apple knew that this was happening, but maybe they just didn't care. Maybe there really is nothing they could do about you giving out your Apple ID information. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I don't know. I'm curious to see how long this will last. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you have before we end this episode? There are a couple other things I, I, I might want to talk about, but, uh, you know, that was our main topic. What else do you want to talk about? Well, I just wanted to bring up, uh, iOS 17.2 and, and Mac OS Sonoma 14.2. I thought those were pretty big updates. Um, now that you have uh, the journal app, or did you you use the journal app in beta, but did you like... I did. Use it again? I, did you revert back to it now that it's like officially out? Uh, I keep trying it, and I just don't like it. Um, okay. I, th- I think it defeats the point of um, journaling in a way that is useful. I think it is mm-hmm. fine for daily highlights. If you want to note down a couple of sentences about your day and you want to attach a podcast um, and a workout that you you did in the day to it, but uh, it is not useful for typing out 500 words, 1,000 words as an actual journal entry because it's only on your phone. And I'm not going to write that much. It's just not a good experience. And then when it comes to looking back through it, um, it's just an endless list view, so there's no there's no neat way to dive into a calendar or it's it's just a really simple experience um, which is meant for very 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 short entries. And I don't know if that's necessarily journaling in a way that a lot of people would understand it. Right. Um, what about some of those Apple Music improvements? Are you digging the whole like you push favorite? Or you favorite a song and it goes into an aggregated playlist? Yeah. I mean, I've I've always thought the the system of it used to be that you had to love songs and then it would get a little heart. Um and that But was where did they go of, after that? I'm not an Apple um, music well, user, was, so I don't remember. It, it you could make a smart playlist um from a Mac that would use that information, but you'd have to create it manually. Um and it was also yeah. used in the algorithm to uh give you better suggestions in your uh, radio personal radio station um, and in things like your your chill mix but uh i do really like this change it feels like it's something that should have happened years ago um because as i said yeah i mean this was trying to do it manually but this was a core thing on spotify like you like a song it goes into a, a play it goes into your liked playlist like that's just what happens there's like a, a separate section called like songs that you everybody gets and so you like a song that's where it goes um and that's kind of how you're able to find it, which is which is annoying in the sense of this is what drives me insane about uh, Spotify. If you like a song, it goes into the liked playlist. If you like an album, the songs in that album do not go in the liked playlist. They get added to your library of albums. Like when you go to album tab, that liked album goes into that. But whether you like a song – and this – I don't think this has changed yet. This has been my biggest gripe. And people are like, I don't understand what you mean. Whether you like a song or you like an album, your artist tab, when you go into artists, those liked songs or liked albums does not import that artist into your liked artists. You have to separately follow them. And that, I don't want to swear. So that is just, it's dumb. It's dumb. Like when I like a song, Put the artist in my liked artist so that because I like to look by artists. So if I see a band that I like, uh, then you can show me, hey, you only liked this song. And then here's other songs if you want to check them out. But like this is the artist. This is the song that you liked or the album that you liked. Like, why, why would you not do that? Don't separate them. Why? Why should I have to like three different things? I think that going into 2024, one of your missions should be to become an Apple Music user. Switch to Apple Music, yeah, because yeah, because it doesn't behave like that, right? Like if I like a song, it like it brings the al it brings the artist into your library, and then you have just that song. But then it also, I believe, says like explore more stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So like it either if you like don't if you like like a band and you only like their one song or album, and you just don't want to see any of their other garbage to them, you're like, no, I just want this. Like you see that, but then you have the ability to go in and like the rest of it. 
Um, I just don't understand why I have to follow a band in order for them to be in my artists. And then if I like their song, it only appears in songs and they don't appear in art. Cause like, what if you remember like, Oh, I liked this song from this band. I remember the band name, but I don't remember the song. How am I supposed to find it? You know, yeah. like, uh, that makes how no am I supposed to, to find what this? No, it doesn't. What I do like is that Spotify now, when you like get into a band or something, it does say at the top, like, here are the songs you liked from them. So that's good. They changed that. That was recent. But like, man, I don't know. It's just it's whole. It's such, such a mess. It's not the same as what iTunes was growing up, which eventually made into Apple Music. Like it, that was library management at its peak. And I, I guess it's still like that for you, right? Largely, I think that a lot of the legacy iTunes stuff on the music app for the Mac uh, is not great. It does feel like a clunky experience. Um, everything takes a long time to load, and it's just not—it's not good on the iPhone and the iPad. It's great, um, and but then I have to use the Mac app sometimes because there are some functions that are only available in the Mac app. If all that stuff got evened out. Um, I would be very happy with Apple Music. I have, it's probably the app, single Apple service that I'm happiest with. I have no complaints about really, other than that, um, which isn't really a complaint about the service. It's just the uh, just the disparity of the apps and a lot of that that baggage that has got carried over from iTunes. Yeah, I mean, I, I uh, yeah, there's a part of me that wants to use Apple Music full time. The one thing I do want. And I don't know if this like exists out there. By the way, love when people, when I say I don't know if this is a thing, instead of bashing me for being like, you should be a, you should know everything about everything in tech. How are you guys calling yourselves tech journalists or reporters? We don't know everything. We are far more knowledgeable than most average people in this, but I don't have every bit of information that has to do with Apple and all things tech in my brain. So it is possible that sometimes I don't remember or I don't know off the top of my head the thought that is coming to my brain. And I say these things and most people are kind enough to send me an email. So about iTunes match. So I want to bring this up. There are a few of you out there who sent me some emails. Shout out to you guys. You are absolute legends for being cool about this and being like, hey, uh, you are paying for iTunes Match and Apple Music and you don't need to do that. It behaves the same way, which I believe you did say you thought that was the I, case. I did, but so you, I think I should get you weren't most sure. credit for, for your financial shout savings out, there. Shout out to Hartley, but you also led me into the sense of like, I don't know if that's true, but like, I feel oh, like okay. it is. <laughs> so you you had some uncertainty behind your uh behind that if you had more conviction then i would i would give you full well you know i don't want to tell you what to do dan I, I, I am a child i am a man child i need someone to tell me what to do at all times um so like that these people hit me up and they were being very kind and were like hey don't do that so back to this whole point which i'm almost forgetting what i'm even talking about at this point back to this whole thing <laughs> If you know that there's a way for me to get my um, iTunes match stuff, like so the, all the iTunes stuff that I had that I downloaded uh, as as a young lad growing up and have in iTunes and then I use iTunes match to port over into Apple Music, um, is there a way to get that to go away? <laughs> like in the sense of like it automatically says, hey, we saw that you imported this via iTunes. We're going to we're going to just remove that and import the Apple Music versions of that. Like, I just want it to be Apple Music for like, I want all that stuff to be properly credited, the track listing, the album art, the the correct title, like, I just wanted to merge with that. And I want my versions that are kind of sketchy from when I downloaded them. You know, we won't talk about the legality of the downloads from those days. But like, I want those to be removed and just port it over with Apple Music version. There's got to be a way to do that. There has to be. I haven't looked into it, but that's like my I look at my library now and it gives me severe anxiety because I have multiple like versions of things that like it's from iTunes match and from Apple Music. And I don't want that anymore. Hey, guys, just want to take one last break to let you know that this episode of the Mac Rumor Show is also sponsored by Masterclass. I'll admit it. I'm not the best person when it comes to personal finances. There's definitely a lot of room for improvement when it comes to cutting costs, saving more money, but most importantly, taking my saved money and making smarter investments. There's a Mastering the Markets class on Masterclass that really gave me some great insight that I'm trying to implement into my personal life. 
Whether you're watching Masterclass on TV, listening in audio mode in the app, or on their site, the quality speaks for itself. It's like Masterclass instructors are your own personal mentors that are going to help you reach your next level. How much would it cost to take a one-on-one class from the world's best? Easily hundreds to thousands of dollars. With a Masterclass annual membership, it's only $10 a month. Memberships start at $120 a year for unlimited access to one-on-one classes with all 180-plus Masterclass instructors. Learn how to negotiate a raise with Chris Voss or manage your relationships with Esther Peril. Again, there are over 180-plus classes to choose from with new classes added every month. You can take classes from MKBHD and become a tech YouTuber or do what I did and learn more about your personal finances and how to manage your money in that Mastering the Markets class. So this holiday season, give one annual membership and you get another free at masterclass.com slash Mac. Right now, you get two memberships for the price of one at masterclass.com slash Mac. That's masterclass.com slash Mac. Offer terms do apply. And thanks again, Masterclass, for sponsoring this episode. Yeah, so. I'm sure that there's a third-party app or there is some sort of setting that enables you to do that. Yeah. Because Apple ultimately had to manage that transition for so many people. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'd have to go through. There has to be some sort of third party. I'll look through. But like I have to go through it manually, which I just don't want to do because there's thousands and thousands and thousands of songs. I think there's like twelve thousand songs in there, so I can't do that. That's just that would drive me insane. Um, so that was one Apple Music change. There was the I don't understand this feature. I mean, I guess I do, but like there's like a use listening history that you have to pair with a focus mode. Why can't I just toggle that off if I like don't want my music listening history to be tracked? Yeah, you can. You just you you can toggle it off, but now you right. can in also the, in the, do it with a focus mode just, if you want to, which is handy. Okay, so so I go into the use. Okay, so that's what I thought. But like, I go into the settings app and I turn off use listening history, and that'll just keep it off completely. The filter is yes. so that it just for like that specific time, and then it automatically yes. reverts back. Correct. Okay. Okay. So, if so you, that actually does I don't make know, sense. Say you use your your phone in a public place uh to play a song on loop or something like in a like in a shop or i don't know um <laughs> then you could yeah. create a focus so you just don't want to do app, that you don't want then, apple music to be like hey you love this song you listen to it six thousand yeah. times here is that song all the time from that artist all the time okay so that, that'd be good for like when i'm in the car with my kids and i want to talk yeah, on that exactly filter sort of and, for. yeah yeah because like my my wife Spotify, um, you know the Spotify Wrapped stuff that comes out. Like some of the artists are kids stuff, and some of mine are like that. Like I have the Mario soundtrack for my son when we listen to that nonstop. <laughs> as like one of my top artists, and it's just like I like it. I like those songs. That's fine, but I don't necessarily want that to be like my top artist ever. So um, I'm very particular about my like music management. I don't want like those things that are not mine to be associated with me whether i like it or not i just don't that's not how i want it so this is just another reason to use apple music then isn't it i think that's what we're what we're learning here well also i am my wife has that problem more than me so maybe she needs to do it i aside from mario any other music that is not something that i personally enjoy that is not from my library we just don't listen to in my car if my kids want to listen to music it better be music that i like (laughs) so uh you can call me a bad dad, but I feel like I'm a good dad because I'm putting good music in their minds. So when my son comes into the car, he doesn't say, hey, let's play the Coco Melon soundtrack. It's, hey, let's play that song from Bayside because I like it. And it's like, hell yeah, you do. And we're going to absolutely listen to that. <laughs> and that's what it's been. And my son's seven. He doesn't listen to Coco Melon, but I'm just trying to appeal to the broader you know, parents out there. I don't know that I've ever watched Coco Melon in my life. Uh, we somehow escaped that. Anyways, uh, there's that. Um, what else came? So in macOS Sonoma, there's that whole enhanced autofill for PDFs, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, that was kind of like the marquee feature for that. Um, and then it adds some of these other things that you got on iOS, like the music stuff, um, the messages, getting stickers easily added just from the tap back reaction. Uh, is there anything in these latest new updates that you're really enjoying? Uh, nothing that hugely stands out to me. I mean, really, it is just those little changes to the music app. There are a couple of other things, I believe, in the music app. The multiple timers. Well, oh, for oh, the yeah, on app. the Mac. 
on, uh, the, on the Mac, the you can now run on the Mac. Yeah. So it's yeah. just little that was the... life stuff. I mean, it's just standard for <clears throat> these sort of uh, point two upgrades. Multiple timers got a huge reaction at one of the. I believe it was his past WWDC for yeah. for iOS, right? That was a day one iOS feature. Yes. Why, why did it take so long to get to the Mac? I mean, uh, that's a good question. How I the guess hell did the UI that take... just like I don't know because it's it's one of those. Um, oh, it looks Apple horrible. Snaps. It looks so, horrible on the Mac. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess they they've had to take time to deal with that, but. I don't need a UI for my timers, though. I mean, as long as I, I mean, just it also get... is less important to have multiple timers on the Mac. It makes sense more on the iPhone, where yeah. maybe you're cooking something and you you want to know when things are counting down for different reasons. But the Mac, you're not going to necessarily be doing things like cooking and doing no. timers with your Mac. So I get it that it's not as important, but it is weird they didn't come at the same time. Well, you could be doing like different Pomodoro timers, I guess, if you have like like you want to set up one 25 minutes for work and then immediately another one is gonna go i actually yeah, but then that would be multiple yeah it wouldn't i don't know i don't ever use it either so you're right i use a timer i just recently discovered by the way which this has been around for a while that you can set a timer so that it turns off whatever media you're playing that's super oh, yeah. helpful yeah that's, that's super a, that's helpful a good one so if you're yeah. falling asleep you like to listen to yeah. the book it's there so you know Lately, I've been having some minor sleep issues and it's just been on and off. And so, like, sometimes I feel like turning the TV on, even though it's, like, apparently bad for you. And we finally stopped using the TV in our bedroom at night. Um, there are times where I it just helps me calm down and relax and just, like, listen to the white noise. But we have gotten so used to not having the TV on anymore. When we do turn the TV on, it's like it's like as if someone was shining, like, three massive spotlights into our bedroom. It's so friggin' bright. So that we like, and then I'm disturbing my wife's ability to sleep. So I put on my phone and I didn't realize you could do this. So my phone's just going on and sitting there docked for hours on end until I wake up and eventually manually turn it off. But now I discovered the whole timer thing and that's really helpful. It's like a sleep timer, which is cool. So yeah, yeah, you're probably out there. People, you're probably just like, how do you not know this, Dan? You should know every single thing about <laughs> your iPhone and everything. Yeah. Get off my back. Okay. <laughs> there's a lot there's a, there's a lot that you know that's why we make these hidden tricks features video because it's fun and maybe i'll add that one there for those of you who did yeah, it's a good one it is a good one um all right that's it that's that's it for this week um you know merry christmas if we well no we have one more before christmas so we'll talk to you guys next week 